Hey, this is James from Mortici, 3D Printed Braces and Orthotics. Um, today I'd like to introduce some of our common cast modifications. So our first common modification is a medial heel skive. A medial heel skive increases the pressure on the medial side of the subtalar joint axis to increase the supination uh, moment around that subtalar joint axis. So it's useful in a traditional orthotic design where you also would like some rear foot correction. A small medial skive is two mil, medium is three mil and large is four mil. When considering what size of skive to choose, it's important to take into consideration the size of the foot that you're dealing with. For example, a women's size five, a two mil heel skive might be adequate Whereas on a man size 14 um, foot, a 2 mil heel skive might be undercorrected. A triplanar heel shave is similar to a medial heel skive, however it is slightly larger and sits more anterior. The point of a triplanar heel shave is that due to that slighter anterior placement, it also can produce some correction within the sagittal plane as well. Once again, a triplanar heel shave is a modification that's useful in a patient with a medially deviated subtalar joint axis where you would like to increase the rear foot correction. A fifth ray plantar grind is a modification um, where the shell height is increased under the mid fifth metatarsal, um, where a traditional cuboid notch will sit much more proximal. A fifth ray plantar grind sitting more distal to the mid tarsal joint has the effect of being able to produce a pronation uh, moment at the mid tarsal joint in a similar way that a valgus pad would or even putting a valgus um, forefoot correction into the device. This type of modification um, can be quite useful in patients where you're dealing with significant forefoot abduction. Also, adding valgus correction to an orthotic has been shown in the literature to reduce the load on the plantar fascia. So this might be a, a useful modification for a patient suffering with um, plantar heel pain. A cuboid notch um, sits further back than a fifth ray plantar grind underneath the cuboid. This helps to support the keystone in the lateral arch. It's also a really useful modification when prescribing a low bulk orthotic such as a wedge or a um, concave wedge. With both of these devices the um, lateral heel cup and lateral side of the orthotic is removed or reduced significantly to reduce bulk. However, a cuboid notch can be a useful modification just to increase that lateral support and to stop the patient from sliding off the device and just to improve overall comfort. A small cuboid notch is two mil, a medium is three mil, and a large is four mil. A medial heel flare increases the width of the orthotic shell underneath the talocalcnavicular joint. This is a useful modification in patients where the significant hind foot pronation and forefoot abduction, where a traditional shell design um, can potentially cause irritation underneath the um, talocalcnavicular joint. A medial flare is also useful in a patient with a medially deviated subtalar joint axis as it will increase the um, pronation moment um, due to its location sitting further medial to the subtalar joint axis. A medial wrap is a vertical modification to the medial um, edge of the shell, increasing the vertical height of the heel cup 
extending into the arch. This is a modification to increase the transverse plane correction of the shell. A medial calcaneal accommodation is a sweet spot accommodation which is located at the medial calc tubicle. It's a modification to reduce pressure in that particular spot. However, this can also be used in other locations on the device. The way to request a hotspot or a medial calc accommodation is to mark on the um, foot prior to scanning it where you'd like the accommodation to be and to specify the depth of the accommodation. For example, this is very useful in patients where there is a fibroma formation that might be irritated by an orthotic shell or also in cases where there is arthritis, say for example, at the um, first tarsometatarsal joint where there's significant osteophyte development plantarly and um, too much pressure in that place might cause callus blister formation. A medial calc accommodation is a useful way to accommodate that deformity. An elongated heel aperture is not one of our more common modifications. However, some podiatrists request it. The modification originates in the same location that a traditional heel aperture does. However, it extends more anterior medially into the shell. The aim of this modification is to reduce pressure and to accommodate the proximal band of the plantar fascia. A first ray accommodation and a first ray cutout from a functional point of view are aimed at achieving the same effect, which is to improve first ray function of the foot. However, they do it in a slightly different way. With a first ray cutout, which you can see to the right of the screen, the distal medial shell is removed, it's sliced off. This is in effect to help facilitate that first metatarsal head plantar flexing during mid stance. However, one of the consequences of doing so is that the distal medial edge of the device is no longer in contact or plantar grade with the shoe or the ground. This can reduce the medial stability of the device if it's not used in conjunction with either a um, rear foot post or a forefoot post. A medial ray, a first ray accommodation on the other hand, works in a similar way. It drops the medial distal edge of the shell at a steeper angle and also removes a section which allows that first metatarsal head to plantar flex. However, it does so by bringing the medial distal edge plantar grade. So this is a more stable accommodation to improve first ray function if you're not planning on using any sort of posting. So you can see with that first ray cutout that that medial distal edge of the shell is no longer in contact with the ground. Whereas with our first ray cutout, our first ray accommodation, which is moving at the moment, you can see that that medial distal edge is plantar grade, making for a more stable modification. Thank you for your interest in our cast modifications. Should you have any questions, please feel free to email me at james.ortc.com.au. Alternative to the left of screen is our contact details for our orthotic lab.